I will show you how to parse uh, dates in R when reading a CSV file. In particular, we'll see a very tricky example and I will show you how to parse a quite difficult uh, file. And I hope that the tools that we use here will be useful for much more complex problems. So in order to start with all this, uh, go into this website and download birth.csv. This file will contain two columns. The first column will have a person ID, which will be one, two, three, four, and so on. And the second column will be a date column. And let's see what we can do with that. So in my case, I have downloaded the file into this uh, folder. So this is where I will be reading the the file and then I will be using head equal to true because I will be reading the first uh, row. So here you can see that we have uh, these two columns, the numbers and the dates. You can immediately see that we have a conceptual problem here. Sometimes we have the dates with uh, four digits for the year and sometimes we have two digits for the year. That's kind of problematic. So when R reads uh, this or this kind of um, variables, it will do the following. So obviously it would treat the numbers as numbers, so person is uh, treated as, as a number. The conceptual problem appears with uh, the born column. In this case, this is um, these are there's a strings, but um, R will read them obviously as factors. So here you can see that we have uh, factor levels. So our objective here, here will be to transform these dates uh, or these uh, factors into proper dates. So let's first start by using the as.date function. So this function will uh, require two arguments. The first argument will be the string or factor that we want to transform and the second one will be the uh, structure that we will parse. In this case and in general in R, uh, the way to indicate this is by using um, the percentage symbol. Uh, so we use, we use uh, percent %d, percent %m and percent uh, %y to indicate that the, this will be the structure, this will be separated by this symbol. So obviously we could have any symbol and we could have any order of this. So let's uh, run this and see what happens. You can see that I have a problem here. Uh, some dates were parsed correctly, so the ones containing two digits uh, for the year, but some of them were a complete disaster. So here I have a 2019, 4th, uh, of, uh, 28th of April 2019, and this was 1985. This is completely, completely wrong. The same happens with 1986, which is parsed as 2019. So even though these are treated as um, dates, so if I run the supply function using the class argument uh, here for the second argument, you can see that these are dates. The problem is, is that these are wrong dates, so these are not very useful. So I will show you how to do kind of trick here. Uh, there are several ways of doing this. I think this is one of the most illustrative because you can replicate this for more or much more complex uh, situations. So I'll be using the apply function. So apply will be running on every row. And the way to indicate that is by using this second argument as one. So if I, if I choose a two instead of a one, R will be looping through the columns and I will I want R to loop through the rows and which which will be the columns you might be asking well it's obviously uh, the born column so this card the final arg argument the third argument will be the function that I will pass R to um, parse this variables. In, in my case, remember that these are uh, levels or these are factors. So what I'll be doing here is the following. I will be 
using this weird expression so let's let me explain what this is doing so the first thing that I'm doing is to use the as.character function so here I ensure that I'm properly transforming the x that will be entering the function remember that the x that will be entering the function which, which will be every one of these elements so this is being transformed into a string and then I'm using the str split function so this part this will split the string into three elements so in this case it will be 0, 03, 0, 05 and 99 and then I'm using the unlist uh, function to destroy the list this is returned. So the problem with this is that this function will return a list inside a list. Um, it's kind of weird to explain that, but that's uh, that's how it that's how how it will happen. So I'm using a list to destroy that list and to return uh, only one list containing three elements. So once I run the list uh, command, I will have three elements, and I will be keeping the third one. So this is why I have here this number three. The third uh, thing that I will be pulling out here will be the year. Sometimes this will have four characters, uh, sometimes it will have two. So if the number of characters of the expression I am pulling has four characters, I will be returning as.date, same as before, but with a capital Y. So capital Y in this context for R means that the year is expressed with four digits and the other Y is used when I have two digits so this is very simple this is just two cases so if we run this and we cross our fingers we will have a date as the final column here. You can see that this is not date, this is these are numbers, so these are numeric. So let's run supply uh, using the class uh, parameter for the second um, the second parameter class. So let's see what's inside. You can see that uh, this is numeric, so transfer is numeric. This is not a date as I was expecting. But you can see something interesting here. You can see that this, um, if you start comparing uh, for example, let's see, um, 87, so uh, the 2nd of April of 87 versus, let's say, the 2nd of March of 87, you can see that this is 6269 against um, 6300, so these are around 30 days, 31 days. So that is indicating us that something might be right. And what's right here is that these are the amount of days that happen between an initial date. We will see what that initial date is. And uh, something else, because you can see that there is some consistency in the number of days that have elapsed or the, the values that you have here when you start comparing this. So you can do the same thing for 1990 and see. Oh, I don't have. Yeah, here. Um, and you can compare this 1990 with this 1990 and you can see that there is pretty much 30 days of difference. So this suggests me that something is right here, but these are not proper dates. So the way I'll, I'll, I'll be putting this into proper dates will be using another trick and I will run the as.date function again, but using, instead of the string, I will be using these numbers that I parsed, that, that I now know that they are um, numbers. So I know they are day, they are the days, amount of days. The, the kind of problem here is to determine what's the origin. Um, this is a second parameter that we can pass to the as the date function, and this will tell R when the or when the origin happened. So what R will do, R will sum these days to this origin and determine the appropriate date. So this is, uh, sometimes this is, depends on the particular machine or R version when or where you are running this. In general, this will be the appropriate um, origin that you need to determine. 
So you might need some testing um, depending on whether you're running Linux or Unix or Windows and which kind of R version you're running but in general this will be the day. So if I run this you can see that this looks much better. So now I have, remember that this born column is a, well this is a factor so I cannot do much with them. But here you can see that this was uh, 28th of April 1985 and you can see that this was uh, 28th of April 1985. This happens with uh, four, four digits, for four characters for the year and let's see 4th of April 1988 and I have here 4th of April 1988. The same for 1999, 1999, um, May the 3rd and here it is the 3rd of May of 1999. So you can check the rest, uh, this will be all fine, 28th of April 1986, 1986, 4th of um, 28th of April. So you can obviously compare that this is what we wanted versus what we originally had, which was a complete disaster, 2019 didn't make any sense. So uh, if you don't trust me, you can run supply again and you can see that Transfer 2 is effectively and finally and hopefully date. So that's what we wanted. Naturally, because I have dates, I can operate on dates. And that's great. So I can run all the typical R functions. So, for example, I can run weekdays. So, weekdays will tell me the day of the week for this Transfer 2. So, this was a Sunday, this was a Monday, and so on. So this case most of them are Mondays I think the other function that we can run because these are dates is the month function so you can see that this is April, May and so on and so most people were born in April, March anyway an important thing is that sometimes you might want to format the date um, in a very specific way and sometimes for example you might want to format or to output just to just the year or maybe the year and the month so that might be a little difficult to um, but luckily we have a format function that simplifies everything so the format function will do basically the inverse thing uh, that the as the date function was doing in some way uh, because we'll need to supply now a date instead of supplying a string or a factor as we were doing initially and the second argument will be the same in the sense that it will be uh, an expression that will indicate our how to format this date so in this case because I have a y here this will be, uh, for example, 99, 98, uh, 06, 07, and so on. So it will be two digits. And the second expression, because it's a capital Y, this will be uh, creating a 2007, 2006, and so on. So um, if I run all this and see what's inside, you can see that year was uh, 1985, 1988, 1999, and so on. So, uh, hopefully with this uh, approach you will be able to parse practically anything that you might encounter in a real-world situation.